I'm oral historian Mike Chappelle. Today, June 4th, 2011, I'm interviewing Dr. Natalie Jussel for the Endocrine Society at its annual meeting being held this year at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center. The Laurentian Hormone Conference is nice because you, it's uh, at that time it was in the, in Canada in a nice setting and you could talk to other people and the the star speaker that year was Roger Guillemin and uh, Roger Guillemin of course he's done all his career in the States but he's French so uh, he we talked and uh, I and uh, I was with uh, with Jean-Yves Picard, with my my co my coworker, and we uh, we explained that we were having trouble because we couldn't uh, we 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 couldn't show that homogenate would uh, contain the uh, contain the our active substance. So he said, "Well, I think you should try maybe in, uh, incu uh, incubating your. T uh, you should try incubating." incubating your, your, your tissue, and then test the incubation medium. And he said, I think so, because your hormone obviously is secreted. It's, it's secreted. It, it, it leaves, the, the, your hormone leaves the testicular tissue. And though uh, in the body it goes into the blood, but if you put it into, into a medium, it will, it will go into the medium. So, and, and the medium will not contain all the structural proteins that are toxic. So uh, Jean-Yves and I came back from, uh, from uh, whatever, well, from the Laurentian <laughs> conference. <laughs> and we said, well, he's a Nobel Prize, so he should know. <laughs> and, so we, and so we tried. And so what we did, so we... we well, uh, uh, at that time we were getting our, we were getting our our, our calf fetal testes from a, a slaughterhouse in in Rouen, and we had arrangements. They would send us someone someone in in Rouen. Rouen is about a hundred kilometers from Paris, but there's a fast train connecting Rouen and Paris. So we had arrangements with someone working there that he would pre prepare a package containing uh, the calf fetal testes at the, so we had to end the, at the end of the day, so we could have the day's, uh, the, the, the day's uh, collection, and then put it on the train, and then someone, uh, someone would meet the train in Saint-Lazare, would would uh, take the metro back to the enfant malade, and there Jean Yves and I would chop the testes into small pieces, put it into uh, put it put it to incubate under under oxygen, and then three three hours later, that was about um, uh, eleven p.m. <laughs> we could take we could um, uh, stop the incubation. Um, centrifuge it and collect the, collect the incubation medium and we used to freeze it and then uh, use it and use it later so okay it wasn't uh, it wasn't that easy and I, I i had we did that twice a week i saw a lot of pictures because i thought it was easier to instead of just waiting at home to, to have to go back to the lab at 11 p.m. just going to see a movie and then see and then go, going there afterwards okay and then we found that uh, that uh, yes that we did that the incubation medium did contain AMH, and then when we uh, we when we put when we when we use that incubation medium, which would support our organ culture as a culture medium, we we did find uh, activity. So then we had uh, then we had this medium, which we could su subject to different fractionation procedures, and then test each fraction in the organ culture uh, uh, and find out which, f which uh, fraction had the, had the activity. So I mentioned that just had two, two young, two young um, uh, PhD students working for him and going and collecting free marching collecting free marting fetuses. Well, Bernard Vigier was one of them. 
And uh, so uh, he, he stayed in Jaslav a, a long time. And then he, uh, he was interested in AMH, and uh, he, he, he decided, he thought that we were, that Jean-Yves and I were, were, were making progress, and just no, but in fact, just wasn't really working on it. So he decided to leave just slab and to come to us. He, he managed to, um, to uh, uh, create three different monoc three monoclonal antibodies against, uh, against bovine AMH. So that was, that was his main work. And then after that, he made a very, very important discovery, which really, I mean, it was in my group, but it was really his. He found that AMH is made by the ovary. Because b before, I mean, Jean-Yves and I, we had been working only on the testes. But he uh, had, uh, he thought that since Sertoli cells were making AMH, then probably granulosa cells were making it too, because there are many uh, homologies between granulosa cells and um, between granulosa cells and um, and. Um, and, and Sertoli cells. So he, so he said, I want to, I want to, inv I, I want to find out whether, uh, whether the whether granulosa cells make AMH. So uh, he, um, so he went out. He collected um, uh, cow's ovaries, and then <laughs> he had us all. He equipped us all with with syringes and needles. And he said, you, you aspirate follicular fluid from these ovaries. And so he said, but be very careful. I want you to separate the large follicles from the medium and the small ones. So we told him, you're mad. I mean, what do you want us to do that? He says, yes, 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 I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure AMH is made by the ovary. Just do as, you, as I tell you. So, OK, so Jean-Yves and I and um, Dean Tran, a um, uh, Vietnamese co-worker, um, OK, we, we, we did what he wanted. And then he had, um, he had um, uh, perfected an Im immuno, um, a radioimmunoassay against AMH using his, using his antibody. So he did his radioimmunoassay. And he did find that the, small fo the, 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 follic the fluid from the four small follicles contained a large amount of, uh, of AMH, and the large follicles much less. And then later we uh, we we did the the immunocytochemistry and we confirmed uh, we confirmed his findings. So that's what essentially Bernard did. Then Bernard's work was then making the monoclonal antibody, which allowed us to purify it, and showing that the ovary is making um, is making AMH. When you had uh, finally purified yes. AMH, uh, how was that? work uh, accepted at the time, and how did uh, Professor Jost react when you had... Oh, he was overjoyed. He was, uh, he was overjoyed, I, but I think he, what he, what he, um, he, uh, what really got him was when Jean-Yves mapped the gene for AMH on chromosome 19. So that he thought, but the reason is that uh, just discovery of uh, the existence of AMH was acclaimed by mostly doctors, uh, pediatric endocrinologists, and uh, in, uh, in the States, for instance, Lawson Wilkins and uh, Mel Grumbach, because his, his, his theories allowed to explain a lot of the intersex disorders which they, they had seen. But in France, as I said, the, endocrine, the, um, the, basic, um, the basic embryologist were, were, the, were Wolf and his uh, the recognized embryologist was Wolf, Etienne Wolf, and he would not accept uh, Jost's uh, the claim that there was a second hormone, and he maintained that the that the that the regression of Mullerian that the regression of Mullerian ducts uh, induced by the fetal testis was due to testosterone. 
that there was testosterone, that testosterone. So he maintained that for a, for a long, long, long time. So Jost was a, a bit, uh, you see, in his hometown, he was contested by, he was contested by a whole school of, uh, of uh, fellow scientists. And the fact that, okay, over the Atlantic, people thought that he was a genius, but it still didn't quite compensate to the, uh, the, for the lack of recognition uh, by, his, by his peers. So, but when he was able to say, AMH exists here, Nathalie has got it in a tube, Jean-Yves has shown that it's on chromosome 19. So he was really extremely, extremely happy.